Uh, good morning, Jeff. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Rich? Very good. How how are you been doing? I I I think uh, you're more or less a regular over on the patient subgroup. Is that correct? Uh, payers payers subgroup. I try to be regular. I kind of disappeared because I had a pretty big project that just came to a hiatus. So I'm now kind of back in the flow a little bit. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Well, good good to have you back. Glad Thank glad you. to see some some old names. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're just coming up to the top of the hour, uh, and I suspect folks will be getting on the call shortly. Um, so I do want to get started. Um, as always, uh, uh, we are recording this, um, and you should have the uh, you should see the uh, uh, agenda on your display. Um, and uh, <laughs> and as Wendy had pointed out, I had my video <laughs> running. So that was also that was also my the front door to my home office. So. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so you, you should be seeing uh, what I'm sharing on the screen. Uh, we always start by reviewing our antitrust policy, uh, and, it, and it's now here, so please feel free to read through that. Uh, the upshot is uh, it's, it's all about being a good person, so I don't need to sort of push that any further. Uh, so, so today is interesting because we're, we're sort of getting back to a little bit more of our more traditional uh, sort of... Um, uh, agenda. We've had quite a few uh, speakers uh, present, which has been great. Uh, and I try, I'm trying to interleave uh, our guest speakers with sort of our regular uh, kind of um, actions and activities here within the organization, uh, just so that we all sort of stay in sync, particularly with some of the work that we do in this, uh, sp in this special interest group and in our subgroups as well. Uh, and that said, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about, we do have a couple more speakers coming up, which is fantastic as well. So we'll get to that. Um, let's see, I think everybody, uh, well, Erica, I think is fairly new. I think she's been on, on a couple of calls. Erica, did, did you want to introduce yourself a little bit to the, to the group here, if, you, if you'd be interested? Sure. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Great. Um, yeah, I'm Erica Bierbauer, and um, I'm in Denver, Colorado, and thanks to Wendy for introducing me to the group. Um, my background is as a pharmacist. Um, I've worked in hospital and retail and um, recently um, more in drug information. And my interest in blockchain got started a few years ago when I was investing in cryptocurrency, and then I got really interested in the technology. And a few years ago, um, the company I was working for got bought by IBM, so I currently work for IBM, and I've done a few projects in blockchain with them in, around healthcare, and I'm um, really excited to be here and hopefully participate um, in something soon. So thanks for having me. Oh, well, great, great to have you, Erica. And, and you mentioned Colorado. So, so do you guys, do you and Wendy know each other, um, like out of the Colorado area, out of Denver? Um, yes, we, we actually saw each other last night. <laughs> Oh, right. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, it's, we, it's a rare thing to have friends that are actually physically located. <laughs> yeah, we hope to work on some projects together as well. So, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to utilize our proximity to help us further our interest in blockchain and our networking, too. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a great opportunity to have you uh, joining us, Erica. Thank, thank you so much for participating. And we're always looking for sort of, you know, some new blood and insight. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we are continuing to grow. So this is fantastic. So thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Anyone else on the call interested in uh, introducing themselves if, if they haven't already? Alrighty, yeah, I think um, most of the folks here, uh, I recognize their names, and so thanks for joining us again. Uh, okay, so let's move on to community announcements. Uh, so uh, this is sort of an ongoing thing, and I believe uh, 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 Michelle and uh, Epeline are, are due to um, kind of finish up in the next couple of months, and they're going to come out uh, and present to membership uh, when they complete. But they're, uh, they're still in the process of uh, developing their benchmarking study uh, through Cambridge, uh, and they are absolutely looking for uh, enter enterprise blockchain solutions that are uh, actually deployed in, in production right now. Uh, they're in the process of de developing this, this very interesting paper. Uh, and so um, if you or anyone you know happens to have a, a real blockchain solution that is in production right now, feel free to contact them and, uh, and then let us know because we'd, we'd, of course, be interested to, to hear more about uh, what you guys are doing there. 
Uh, and as I said, I think uh, the plan was uh, in a couple of a uh, couple of months uh, uh, that team will come and visit us and talk a little bit more about uh, sort of how things came together. Uh, does anyone else have any announcements that they'd like to to make within the community as far as blockchain and healthcare goes? Okay, sounds good. All right, well, so let's let's move on to our uh, our subgroup updates. So I I just saw it looked like Dennis is just getting on the call, which is fantastic timing, uh, and I'll let him get himself set up. Uh, and uh, oh, well, Dennis, good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Very good. Your timing is impeccable, sir. <laughs> Thank you. It's very good. It's very kind of you. Uh, so we're just just now getting into subgroup updates. Did did you want to talk a little bit about the patient subgroup? Um, we had uh, last week uh, our meeting and we discussed about the possible uh, projects, possible use cases for the patient subgroup. And uh, we have chosen three or no two uh, primarily interesting use cases. And okay. I hope we can proceed to make, uh, make it more uh, precise and choose one of the uh, one of them one of one of the two of them one of two of them in order to proceed in the next meetings well excellent okay good and and uh, I, I have a note here so uh, and this is kind of a big deal so so Ben Digi who's who's been leading the the patient subgroup for for a while uh, has other professional obligations so he's handing he's handing the subgroup over to you Dennis is that correct uh yes <laughs> yes okay exactly. <laughs> so uh, public? You, you want to make it public well sure well yeah sooner or later yes so <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay we are very much welcome <laughs> oh, and and thank you <laughs> so for for everybody that's on the call dennis do you want to talk a little bit about uh you know who you are and 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 actually even where you're calling from because it's you're in a bit of a unique location I am in a, a beautiful location in Switzerland next to Lake Geneva and looking to the snowy mountains still. And uh, I have been working uh, in the last 20 years in uh, especially digitalization projects. Uh, I'm coming actually from heart automation. And I have been working uh, at the Deutsche Telekom uh, for billing, architecture, uh, plus uh, the uh, workflow automation. I worked at Credit Suisse for IT quality management primarily and implemented CMMI. Maybe it's, it's, a, uh, it is something, it's, a, it's a term, it's a concept uh, which is familiar uh, some of us. And I have been working in the last uh, six years as a management consulting and uh, also responsible uh, at Roche Diagnostics for the uh, product portfolio management. Um, I am very much uh, um, uh, interested in, uh, in, in, in healthcare, the digi dig digitalization and primarily the implementation of blockchain. And uh, I have also a proposal for the subgroup uh, clinical trials and uh, implementation of uh, blockchain. And one of the two of the use cases is uh, my proposal. So, uh, and anybody from the, from the group is very much welcome to join us and uh, looking forward to your uh, support and commitment. Yeah, excellent. And, and uh, well, again, thank you, Dennis, for, for sort of stepping up. Uh, I, to, you know, so Dennis and I know each other by way of the HIMSS conference that happened earlier this year. Uh, and uh, Dennis, you were also very much involved in the global, uh, the, I, oh gosh, what was it called now? The, the Hyperledger, the big global conference that happened out of Switzerland uh, at the end of last year, right? Yeah, um, exactly. It was, so, a, it was a good opportunity, by the way. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. And so, uh, so what I'm excited about is the fact that Dennis has this excellent domain experience uh, in the healthcare space, particularly in the, in the European areas there. 
and uh, and that really lends itself uh, to, to me very well to uh, to developing solutions that are not necessarily U.S. centric. Uh, and so I'm I'm very happy uh, to have Dennis joining us. And uh, you know he's you know he's already intonated. He's got some great ideas. Uh, so if if anyone's on the call that isn't uh, already a member or hasn't been on uh, one of those uh, patient subgroup calls, I would highly recommend. Uh, getting involved. Uh, we're at this really nice sort of juncture where uh, as, as Ben sort of segues over to uh, Dennis's leadership, we have an opportunity uh, to sort of engage new ideas and to think down some very interesting uh, new and different paths uh, through Dennis's leadership. So, uh, you know, so if you've ever been interested in getting involved in patient subgroup, now would be a great opportunity to do so. Okay, well, thank you, Dennis. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled uh, to have you sort of driving this and uh, obviously going to be looking forward to, to seeing how, uh, how things come together in, in the next few months. Thanks a lot, Rich. It's, it's a really friendly introduction. You're welcome. Okay, um, so, uh, so for payer subgroup, uh, uh, Ravish, I don't see on the call, and, uh, and usually he gives me uh, an update on the state of what uh, the subgroup is up to, so I will have to pass on that. I can speak to that. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, well, in our last call, we were most, we've been mostly working on the uh, blockchain selection framework. And one of the things that's of concern to me is I have no problem developing it in, uh, under the kind of auspices of the payer subgroup, but it's not unique to payers. It's not even unique to healthcare. And I'm concerned, to me, one of the kind of the proof of the pudding is in how the model we're developing stands up to a wide array of different use cases. And we need more inputs from people. We need a more diverse uh, group. And I'm not sure how to get there because I think the fact that it's being done under the auspices of the payers group kind of sort of a, a limit, limits limits yeah. who would like who would even think that we'd be doing this work. And uh, so I'm looking for guidance and advice on how we might put this in the right place so that we get a broader, more diverse participation. Good, uh, so, so good, good for, for the update and thanks for, for taking that, uh, Jeff. So, so I, I'll always defer to, to Sir Ravish on, on, on guidance on this, uh, but what, I would, what my recommendation would be, and, and, uh, you know, and we could certainly loop Ravish into this uh, next time around, um, we have you know, over a thousand members in the, in the membership here, and so my immediate re response would be, you know, if, if we are looking for a little bit more diversity and sort of insight, uh, I would open this up uh, with, a, with a, a, you know, a, a nice email uh, framed out from uh, that subgroup uh, to talk a little bit about what the work is that you guys are doing and where your, where your thoughts are and, and how we can get membership, you know, to sort of, uh, uh, you know, sort of chip in with their insight and their thoughts on this. Because, Again, uh, I, I always am thrilled uh, and, and I'm very, very, always very happy to, to talk about the SIG uh, in that we have so many members uh, that are already sort of pre-filtered. Uh, they're generally speaking, generally, uh, they're, they're healthcare professionals in some, some general context where they have an interest in that space. And then additionally, they have an interest uh, or even sometimes expertise in blockchain technologies. And so, you know, this is, this is a great opportunity to say, you know, if, if anyone is looking for a, uh, a hand or, or insight or, or thoughts uh, that, you know, fully take advantage of the fact that we have a, a, a very, very large membership that's international uh, here. Uh, as a great anecdote, I had a, a telecon earlier this week uh, with, with, some, with a group uh, out, of, uh, out of the East Coast. They're looking to develop a, um, uh, a series of um, uh, academic sessions through uh, one of the colleges out east and uh, and so you know i basically said look at we have this great resource here you know let's let's put them to use and so uh, we'll either have them on a future call 
and or uh, you'll probably be seeing an email coming through uh, um, that introduces uh, their team and they're looking for resources and insight from folks that uh, that they want to participate in, in developing this uh, this learning experience. So so anyway, so so that would be my approach, Jeff. If if it feels like you know you're you're maybe starved a little bit on the ideas, I would open this up to to full membership and and see if we can you know maybe put a little bit more uh, um, emphasis behind this and a little bit more uh, you know uh, thought uh, independent thought through this. Um, and I think that would be the way the way forward. And just to give a little bit more color on what it is for those people who have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we're working on a blockchain selection framework, and there are many such frameworks out there, but I find that most of them don't go very far. I mean, they have a certain use case in mind, and they either prove it or don't prove it because that's the way they were constructed. And we have what we're developing is kind of a, a, at least a three-tier model. Tier one is to determine whether blockchain might even be a usable, a useful solution um, because it's been applied in a lot of areas where there's really no need for it. Uh, just because of everyone's enthusiasm, we're kind of seeing everything as a nail and we're a hammer. So the first, first tier is to determine whether blockchain, you know, has a reasonable, has a reason to be considered as a solution. The second tier, um, which can't really be completely done until we finish the first tier, is then to determine if blockchain might be appropriate, which blockchain model might you need to you might be best. And that would be, you know, should it be a public or a private blockchain? Should it be permissioned or permissionless? Those types of considerations. And the third tier, which is well off in the future, and I think probably after there's been a consolidation in the industry, is once you know what class of blockchain you want, which is actually the best blockchain for your particular use case. So that's kind of what the, what the large picture is, and uh, we're looking for people to chip in their perspectives. Excellent. Yeah, I think I think that's that's a that's a good approach. Uh, and yeah, getting getting maybe a little bit more momentum behind it, uh, and and some you know another, another round of eyes on it would be probably a very good a very good mm -hmm. thing at this point. Okay. Well. Well. Thanks, Jeff. And you know, just just parenthetically, you know, I, I had mentioned that we have this this group uh, that are looking to develop uh, this ep academic sort of uh, solution out east. It almost sounds like what you guys are developing may be very useful. Uh, for that that effort as well, and so I'll keep that at the back of my mind as as we uh, get get these gentle. I think these they're gentlemen. I think they're all men that I've talked to. Um, <laughs> we'll get them involved in uh, in in using this uh, the SIG as a resource, and I think what you're doing might even be beneficial too. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks, Jeff, for for stepping up on that. Appreciate it. Um, and so the, the last uh, of our subgroup updates is for the healthcare interoperability subgroup. Uh, I know Stephen uh, couldn't make the call, uh, but uh, we did exchange an email this morning. So uh, he's been very busy uh, with some work efforts. I think he's out of San Diego. Uh, and so uh, he let me know that the, he, they're planning to sort of uh, kick off this particular subgroup because it's fairly new. Uh, he is uh, in the process right now of generating some uh, agenda uh, uh, resources, and he's very, uh, very excited because he's already working with uh, uh, Brian Bentau from Instamed, uh, who presented here uh, about a month or so ago uh, on some of the uh, resources that they're doing, uh, particularly as it relates to uh, Brian, if you might recall, uh, gave us a demo where they're actually, uh, they've implemented FIRE. Uh, fast healthcare and operability resources into uh, the fabric architecture. And I, I know Stephen got, was very excited about that, and so he's working with Brian on that aspect, as well as uh, we had um, uh, World Cebu uh, present uh, Walter, oh gosh, I forget Walter's last name, uh, from World Cebu presented uh, as well uh, here. Uh, and he talked a little bit about Convector and some of the tools that they're using uh, to help uh, develop turnkey solutions. So, uh, so Steven's in process in developing all of this, uh, and uh, he's just about ready to sort of announce this to, to, the, to membership. 
and uh, and sort of have a big big kickoff meeting for the subgroup. So that's due to happen the next few weeks. So I will certainly keep you posted of that, and I certainly would expect uh, we'll see an email from Stephen uh, out to membership uh, pretty soon. Okay, uh, so uh, we've got some uh, new developments with the ad hoc teams. Uh, so wiki redesign can, is just, a, it's ongoing. Uh, and I'm gonna, and this is something that Ravish has been working on. And uh, I think Wendy knows that Ravish and the three of us have been sort of uh, struggling with some of the issues with Confluence. Uh, that, that aside, what I'm gonna just sort of open this up to is uh, if you happen to have any experience with Confluence, uh, and you'd like to sort of uh, donate your time to help uh, help this uh, group out, please let me know uh, either uh, through email or through the Rocket Channel, uh, Rocket Chat channel. Uh, and what we're really looking for is someone to, to, to just sort of put their, their expertise in Confluence uh, to, to help us uh, sort through some of the redesign issues of, this, of the wiki itself and, and to help uh, with some of the issues that we're having, uh, particularly um, uh, Wendy has this wonderful Word document uh, that's, uh, oh, I don't know, over 100 pages uh, in size, I believe, right, Wendy? Uh, and we're just, we're just looking for the optimal way to get that imported through Confluence. Uh, we've been told uh, through Hyperledger Leadership that we don't have uh, macros uh, enabled, and so we're looking for a, maybe a different workflow here, or maybe something real obvious that, that none of us have sort of come across. So if you happen to be a Confluence person and you want to sort of test your metal, feel free to contact me uh, or contact, uh, contact one of us uh, either directly or through Rocket, uh, the Rocket Chat channel. Uh, okay, any, any other comments on, on that? Thoughts? Do we have any Confluence experts on the call? Oh, curses, okay. Um, all right, and then uh, we've also got an academic research team in the works. Uh, so Logan Wilding has, has been probably doing uh, most of the sort of sh shorter term work. Uh, Adrian has been off on uh, something of a sabbatical. Uh, so Logan's uh, been updating uh, the proposal for that research team. Uh, as, as sort of a, a background to that for anyone that might be interested, uh, this is really an effort to identify uh, resources and approaches to develop uh, uh, sort of a, an understanding of how we engage the the, uh, the academic community in in either identifying and vetting or helping to persuade uh, academic researchers to, to do uh, very very objective uh, work in uh, in blockchain uh, technologies, particularly as it applies to the healthcare space. Um, and so the, um, that's an ongoing uh, uh, issue. It's, it's a fairly, fairly, um, fairly active team. Uh, in fact, Nisarg, I, I see you uh, on the call. Um, did you want to chime in on any of this, or are is that pretty, pretty good? Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, everyone. And uh, and uh, Rich, really apologies. Last couple of weeks have been really busy for me. I haven't been able to join these uh, join these calls too often. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, we do need to kind of uh, jumpstart a little bit more of uh, the discussion and activities in this. Uh, I mean, just for my company, we have been working with a few universities for um, just being able to, you know, get some of their data sets for machine learning, for example. And, you know, I think that the discussion does come about like, you know, about this ownership and how the IPs are going to, you know, how the IP is going to work and things like that. So, I mean, I just, I, I just see there's as a, there's a good potential and what would be nice is to just pick maybe one need by reaching out to them and just being able to narrow down on, just, I, I think the best thing to do to keep this project moving forward is get a couple of academic research centers involved in this. So yeah. okay. and I think that's the best way to do it. Else, you know, I think it the, the discussions tend to fade away and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so uh, I don't see Logan on the call, but yeah, um, uh, he I, as I said, he has done some work, um, and so really, we just want to we need to pick that up and continue to move forward with it. And I absolutely agree. Uh, I think eventually getting an academic institution involved would be very very helpful at this point. Um, so, so that's continuing, and again, if you have an interest in that, uh, feel free to contact myself uh, or Adrian or anyone on that particular team. 
um, and uh, we'd be happy to sort of uh, loop you into that uh, those discussions going forward. Okay, and then um, for uh, for folks that that may have uh, this this may sound familiar to so. Uh, I want to say a few weeks ago, uh, we had a conversation. Uh, this, all, this comes all the way back from the HIMSS conference, uh, where uh, I, I had made sort of an observation that a lot of folks coming up to the, the Hyperledger booth uh, was asking us uh, about whether we had use cases developed uh, and, and, and publicly available for, for people to sort of peruse. And so, uh, so sort of fast forward, uh, so we now are in the process of developing a, a, a use case team. Uh, for the sake of uh, this uh, special interest group, uh, and again, it's going to be scoped to to healthcare. Uh, and Wendy, uh, who's on the call this morning, Wendy uh, has has really sort of got got the ball uh, moving here. So, uh, Wendy, I want to hand this over to you, and you want to talk a little bit about about your ideas and, and thoughts as we go forward with this new team. Oh, fantastic! So, um, this arose not only from interest, but also the need to tailor. Um, use cases that are more than theoretical. And uh, most of you who have seen the literature about use cases understand that um, very high level of information has been provided, but nothing actionable for healthcare organizations. So as we had been talking about developing more meaningful use cases, uh, we determined under Rich's leadership to create this ad hoc team. So what I would like to propose to this group is that we have a kickoff meeting where we discuss, uh, we determine how to create use cases. There was an excellent article published about two weeks ago from Horst, um, now I can't think of his last name, Troublemeyer, um, that describes how to construct a use case in a meaningful manner that would be, that would be, that whereby academic medical centers and other hospitals would be receptive to the nature of information. And so what I'd like to do is in that meeting that we create kind of a framework for how we're going to write use cases what specific sections we would want to cover, what level of detail we would want to address so that there's some consistency among the groups so that when we are at HIMSS, we can present any number of these use cases and they will kind of look and feel the same to the reader, but they will have obviously be tailored to different topics. So the next part is choosing um, which use cases that we would want to focus on first. I propose that we start small with use cases that have the most potential value add. And so in the HIMSS book, um, the, there were five use cases that were very consistently described. So I listed them here. However, we have leadership in our group that has experience in other use cases. So what I would say is that anyone who would like to be part of this use case group, participate in this first call and help determine which, say, five use cases or so that we feel would be most pertinent to start with. Once we have that traction and gain some momentum, then we can expand to other use cases that can follow a format. And again, not only would that be more meaningful to our community, but it would also be easier for our members to be able to construct use cases if we provide this template. So um, I am eager for your feedback and participation on this um, ad hoc team. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, for people that are, that are interested in use cases in general, uh, the, the article that, uh, that Wendy uh, has posted uh, up on our uh, Google Drive uh, is, is really an excellent resource. And so, I, you know, clearly you, you can even take this as uh, out, out of context, uh, you know, if, if you're not particularly interested in getting involved in this team, which I would recommend you do. It's still an excellent resource, regardless. And uh, and special thanks to to Wendy for presenting this because uh, it is it's, it's really an outstanding resource uh, when it comes to de de sort of developing uh, a proper use case. And and uh, and I think Wendy, your point was the the idea is to to do this in a way that we can sort of template this so it'll make us make it very easy for us and others to sort of follow suit doing so. Exactly. 
Yeah, excellent. And so um, again, if you're interested, uh, please contact Wendy, uh, probably easiest, uh, or myself, but probably easiest would be through the Rocket Chat channel. Uh, and uh, I think what we'll probably do is uh, when we get enough sort of uh, people feedback, uh, we can uh, go move forward with a, uh, a, an open meeting uh, and, and sort of kick the team off. Uh, my suspicion is we'll probably generate uh, an email to, to membership uh, and, uh, and sort of try to engage uh, the, the broader group uh, with this because I think this is going to be something important going forward. And, uh, and again, you know, just, just my experience at, at the conference suggested that this is a, a very, very significant, significant and, and uh, issue of particular interest to folks that are still trying to understand where the blockchain value is. Uh, in the healthcare space. Okay, well. Um, I, hello, yeah. I, I just wanted to say something about that. My name is Patricia Buendia. I'm the CEO of Signed, and I really welcome this initiative. I have not joined this um, group for <clears throat> several weeks. I was very busy, but um, uh, I, I like this initiative by Wendy. Uh, we are actually partnering up with uh, Florida International University. We're located in Miami. Um, to write a um, small business, actually it's an STTR, but it's uh, like a small business grant for the NIH. And we've been researching actually uh, in similar ways, you know, uh, how, what are the efforts uh, or the current projects that are being um, worked on in, in academia related to blockchain and healthcare. And uh, as of now, we looked at the NIH, um, you can look at the NIH report and you can find two two uh, phase one grant proposals uh, that are using the blockchain for healthcare. So uh, I am very interested in that and I'll be happy to, to talk to um, Wendy and you um, after, after this meeting. Oh, excellent. All right. That's well, fantastic. Thank you so much, Patricia. Yeah, ab Good absolutely. Uh, and, and I don't know, Patricia, if you had, you were on the call earlier when we were talking about the academic research team, but that also may be of value of, or, and of interest to you as well. So there, we have two, two different facets that have a kind of correlation. In fact, I'll just point it out that Wendy is kind of the key, <laughs> key element mm -hmm. of things. So, uh, so special thanks to Wendy for helping to sort of, uh, you know, build out this aspect of our understanding in this space. Um, so uh, thanks again, Patricia, for, for, uh, for mentioning this. And yeah, we, we would love to find a way to, uh, to, to, to work with you going forward. Excellent. Um, and then this is a great segue. And again, this is gonna uh, sort of uh, highlight some of the work that Wendy's been doing. Uh, she's been very busy and, and we're, we're thrilled to have her uh, here. Um, and this is actually even a little bit out of date. Uh, so Wendy, uh, uh, and I, I think I announced this maybe about a month ago, but I just wanted to, to reemphasize this. So Wendy put together an, this outstanding uh, resource uh, of blockchain articles, uh, and it's, like, it's a very large citations list, uh, and I'll just sort of scroll through there. So we have, this is, I believe this is the older document, and we're still in the process of trying to sort out the newer one, which I had mentioned is over 100 pages long. Uh, but it is a phenomenal resource. Uh, and it's part of the wiki now, uh, and, and I would highly, highly recommend that uh, for anyone that's doing any kind of uh, academic research uh, using blockchains uh, uh, solutions, uh, particularly in the healthcare space, although this is not lim necessarily limited to that, this is an outstanding resource. This will get you pretty far down the road. Uh, uh, Wendy, did you want to add anything more um, uh, regarding maybe the update that, that we're in the process of getting in? Sure. So I am working on creating just more of a text-based version so that it's easy to update the wiki. Uh, also, I continue to update that uh, resource on a near daily basis. For I put all of the links so that you can find the article yourself. Due to copyright restrictions, we can't provide all the articles, but I can at least provide you the links. And I always provide a note as to whether the article is available through open access or whether it requires a subscription so that you can, um, depending on your levels of access, that you know how to obtain those articles. Also, um, if anyone is working on a particular use case or project, um, those are small enough 
incidences where I can share the actual publications with that group. So, and I could probably do it on an individual basis, but we just cannot provide the articles more broadly to the group. So I'm just hoping that that's a great way to start. Please feel free to do word searches and uh, so that you can find additional resources. As Erica and I were talking about yesterday, Erica is also involved in searching academic literature and that um, because this is kind of a newer academic field, there aren't good ind indexes yet uh, to be able to find academic articles. So what I've had to do is combine resources from multiple different indices so that we can have a more comprehensive approach. Yeah, excellent, yeah. And uh, and as I had mentioned, we're in the process of uh, re revising this. I think we're, we're trying to get into about a monthly cycle. Uh, it would be great if we could do it more regularly, but we're that, that rolls all the way back to finding someone who's an expert in Confluence to help us going f uh, go from a, a very complex Word document in, into Confluence without losing any, uh, any of the formatting. Uh, Wendy's, uh, you know, Wendy's work to date has been phenomenal and we have a very, very nice document that's an excellent resource. Uh, and as she points out, you know, uh, some of the stuff is, is open access. Some of it does require a subscription, but please work uh, with Wendy if, you know, if you need to get access uh, and, and she can, you know, help to arbitrate that or certainly point you in the right direction. So, uh, yeah, uh, very, very good resource. This is, this is just a phenomenal resource. And again, thanks to Wendy for making that happen. Okay, um, so uh, we do have a couple of other uh, healthcare opportunities uh, that, I, that I try to uh, put before membership. I, I think this went out to full membership about a month or so ago, uh, and I just wanted to reprise that because we're, we are coming close to the deadline, uh, which is uh, well, more or less about a week away. So <laughs> it'd be a, a quick turnaround here. Uh, but uh, the, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is uh, driving uh, two uh, separate challenges. Uh, one is social determinants of healthcare, uh, which uh, I don't know. Most people probably have a sense that this is kind of a hot, hot topic right now, um, and so they're looking at a, a challenge there. Uh, and and then separately, uh, they're also in the process of uh, they have an open challenge for home and community-based care, um, and and again, both are closing out at the end of next week. So it, it is a kind of a short notice, um, and uh, and yet. Uh, and for me particularly, because my, my interest uh, and background is in uh, dialysis care, uh, that, that sort of home community-based solution, uh, that, that challenge looks very interesting to me. Uh, but realistically, you know, for, for these things, uh, the, it's a very, very quick turnaround. As you can see, it's just over a month that it opens and closes. Uh, and so um, we try to do as, as much as we can do uh, with the time that we have. Um, but anyway, it's there. So if, if you ha happen to have an idle week, uh, this next week uh, and you know uh, again we can open this up to membership uh, I think the uh, the original email went out about a month or so ago when this opened up uh, I don't think I got anyone really interested uh, in, in pursuing this but uh, I wanted to put it here just in case uh, any comments or thoughts oh and and I'll just add you know if anyone uh, happens to come across uh, these these broader challenges that are you know generally they're funded uh, through ONC or you know in this case uh, uh, RWJF uh, feel free to pass that along because I'd really like to uh, to let membership have have an opportunity to to get engaged uh, as Patricia had mentioned earlier she's working on a STTR or what I always refer to as a sitter uh, sitters and sibbers uh, kind of their kissing cousin for small businesses. Uh, are all generated through the government. And so uh, every so often a SIBR or a SIDR opportunity does sort of bubble up that may be of interest uh, to this community. Uh, and I, uh, as a small business owner, I have worked uh, SIBRs in the past, SBIRs, uh, and uh, SIDRs, STTRs. Um, and SIDRs uh, tend to be more, they, they have to be wedded with an academic institution. Uh, and so uh, that I, I give Patricia particular credit because those are very, very hard to sort of coordinate, particularly given the, the short time frame that they're usually uh, uh, open for. Uh, but if you do come across anything like that, please pass that along because I'd be happy to see if we can get, get uh, membership engaged in these. Okay, um, so really not a whole lot of new business going on. I, I did want to mention that, uh, and I mentioned that at the top of the, uh, top of the hour, we do have uh, two additional presentations coming up uh, pretty much for the month of, of June. Um, and so uh, Fernando Latour uh, of uh, uh, 
connect. Oh, <laughs> oh where's my Spanish? Uh, connectate uh, solution, uh, soluciones and aplicaciones uh, will present uh, on their topic of universal healthcare uh, chain, which is a product that they're developing. Uh, they're using Hyperledger to make this happen. Uh, and of course, the work that they're doing is in the healthcare field. Uh, Fernando had uh, posted a, an email to membership, oh, about a month or a month and a half ago, I want to say uh, March, April time frame. Uh, and uh, so he's expressed an interest in presenting uh, some of the work that they're doing. Uh, and so we will have them present in two weeks, which is our next meeting. Uh, and then our own uh, Ravish uh, will be presenting uh, on the product that they're developing. Uh, Ravish is, uh, runs a, a company called uh, Jagat. Uh, so he'll be talking a little bit about more about the solution that they're developing, which is really doing, uh, it's, a, it's a visual tool set for developing uh, through Hyperledger fa Fabric. Uh, so that, that'll be in about a month. So that's uh, two meetings out. So really the whole month of June is going to be, uh, again, guest presentations. And so uh, I think as we get into July, again, we're going to try to interleave these general meetings uh, with updates with our subgroups and so forth. Um, uh, and try to make it a little bit more back and forth, but we have so many great guest speakers that are very interested in presenting that we're trying to trying to find a balance there. Um, and uh, and really, uh, you know, we're we're a little bit early this this morning uh, with finishing up on the agenda. So I'd be happy to open this up to uh, any general discussion. Uh, and as always, and it's a rare thing when we can get to the bottom of the agenda uh, with with time remaining. In fact, I think this is the first time this has ever happened. Um, and so I always want to open this up and say, is there, you know, from your perspective as, as a member, if there's ever anything that you want to change or you want to recommend uh, as far as direction or cadence uh, or, or just general interest uh, for this, uh, the healthcare special interest group, please uh, feel free to, I mean, this is now the time to, to, to bring this up. And uh, I'd, I'd be happy to, to have, you know, have a, a, a very good discussion about where to go from here. Any, any thoughts, ideas? I, we're, so it's, we're perfect? <laughs> is, that, is that possible? Uh, Rich, I just, this is Nassar here. I just had a couple I, of... Yes, yes, go ahead, Nassar, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I mean, n n nothing to do with improvements, but just a couple of things I, I noticed. Uh, this home and community care, base care challenge. So, you know, as... As you might know, but let me kind of just uh, introduce me and my company. So I'm uh, I'm heading a telehealth uh, startup, and I, you know I'd be interested in you know exploring if there's anything. I, I am brainstorming a few capabilities for for blockchain in in and you know how it could be you you know incorporated into the solution. So uh, if there's any folks on this uh, on this forum that would like to kind of uh, We'll collaborate or brainstorm and see if we can put a quick, you know, uh, uh, submission for this challenge. Uh, you know, maybe I could help with that, or you know, it'd be great to just see explore that. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, well, t tell us a little bit more about uh, about your company. So we are building a. Uh, so at the moment, we you know we started off with kind of chronic care, but we pivoted more into health and wellness. But uh, so we are building a telehealth platform that connects with uh, wearables and IoT devices to be able to you know um, be able to get the intelligence and be you know analyze it in a way that becomes very useful for both the patient and the, the provider, you know, in a, in a quick way. So. One of the challenges that we have is uh, obviously all of this needs to be not only be used by uh, not only needs to be reimbursed, but there are, there's often multiple providers that come on board, you know. Mm -hmm. So sharing of that information, uh, making sure that there's it's uh, it's being done in a very you know efficient manner is quite key. So I don't have a solution for that right now, but I'm looking at how blockchain can potentially help or how what, what solutions can be used for that. But yes, it is a telehealth uh, framework. So, you know, the patient is gonna be in the home uh, and, you know, these are wellness providers within the community. So I think it kind of fits that theme. Oh, uh, interesting, yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, uh, that's 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 where I'm at, but you know I I am looking at certain uh, certain capabilities, and I'm and in a very exploratory uh, manner, 
what what can be leveraged for pre-authorization because like a lot of some of these services tend to be uh, you know included by insurance some of them not right uh, then and and obviously it's if there's any way to really really streamline the pre-authorization and stuff like that on the back end is really painful by the way you know I think that's the first thing that is a big opportunity for something like an automation um, or, or, you know, yeah, just take an automation tool to be able to add value, right? Yeah, so so so, so I l let me just sort of ask uh, with with the work that you your you and your team are doing, how does how do you imagine blockchain inter intervening and, and, and getting sort of interleaved into that uh, the solution that you provide? Uh, just a couple of areas. So obviously from the, you know, the insurance reimbursement side, I think that's one, right? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, you could, you could potentially do it through clearing houses and all of that. It's just that it's, uh, it's costly. It's, you know, there's, there's many, there's many, many reasons why it just doesn't work. Right. And then what, what providers end up doing is they choose a very narrow range of uh, insurance companies that they will support. So that, basically really impacts who really gets access to care you know right so right and think, and, yeah. and i'll just add that uh the, the telehealth particularly um here in the u.s we've had legislation that that uh, came through at the beginning of this year uh that really uh is intended to, to sort of supplement or, or bolster uh telehealth use um, and if I recall, uh, there are actually now billing codes, uh, ICD codes that are available, uh, so that provider can actually bill for telehealth, which didn't uh, didn't exist uh, as as in a mature way as before. Uh, and I could tell you that through at least through dialysis, uh, and again, my background tends to be more in, in kidney care. Uh, for our dialysis patients, um, one of the great things. Uh, by introducing uh, telehealth, uh, for particularly for home users, those users that use a dialysis uh, uh, protocol in home, uh, what's really great here is that usually you're supposed to go in on a monthly basis to see your provider. Uh, with the legislation that began, I want to say January 1st of this year, uh, it now moves that so that that, uh, that uh, person that is doing home dialysis, uh, oftentimes in a remote area, uh, only has to come in on a quarterly basis. And so where, where you're at, uh, as, our, as far as telehealth goes, is going to be a, a really interesting uh, sort of intersection going forward as far as technology goes, because sort of uh, at least, again, within, within kidney care, we're imagining that, that telehealth is going to start to grow pretty significantly. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel that as well. I, you know, I also, as I mentioned, started off with chronic uh, use cases and I just think it gets very complex because you know that exactly what you said you know okay so the requirement for this disease is 45 days and then you know they certain certain monitoring or uh, remote consultations are still they up in the air so I think psychiatry and uh, wellness is uh, because of mental health and, and etc is a great place to start it's pretty clean you don't need to worry about any of that stuff so that's where we are we are at we're focusing on and um, you know, I think they have, they still have the same issues from a <clears throat> from a workflow and 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 um, and you know just just it, it just the, the back end is it, it's it's it, it tends to get pretty burdensome, and um, yeah yeah. So if if you really want to expand the expand the reach and bring uh, some of these things closer to the patient, I think blockchain has tremendous potential. And I think you just need to try a few things and. Uh, because the other solution, there are other solutions that we know that, but I think it just whatever is the most efficient and can and you know can help, um, you know it can help kind of just be open about that. Okay, can we use some of these new things that are out there? Because you know um, because it is it, it can provide more transparency and things like that. So yeah, if there's anyone who's interested in uh, learning more or would like to collaborate or would be interested in uh, seeing, seeing that, okay, if we can quick, quickly submit something for this challenge, I'll be, I'll be open to connect. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank, thanks for, for, uh, for the information. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, I, I do know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, him, I'm gonna put Joe on the spot here. I, I see uh, Joe Guardiardo, uh, so, this is the gentleman that I had mentioned earlier, uh, just sort of in passing. Uh, we had a we had a telecon uh, talking a little bit about uh, developing an academic uh, 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 sort of suite for uh, a college out east. 
Joe, did you want to uh, talk a little bit about the work that uh, you and your team are doing? Sure, Rich. That would be great. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Great. Thanks. I was actually, uh, I was just typing you a, a, a note to uh, sort of outline what we're what we're looking for, but I appreciate um, the call out. So um, Mike McCoy and I um, are uh, designing and teaching a four course certificate for Jefferson University's digital health. Um, it's gonna focus on blockchain for healthcare. And it's, um, we believe certainly in the US, it's the first of its kind. Uh, and that it will be a four course uh, certificate um, <clears throat> that's gonna basically go through um, the first course will be an introduction really to blockchain and talks about everything from the history of cryptography and encryption to obviously Bitcoin and then um, sort of the evolution to where, where we are today. The second course will um, be a little bit of a deeper dive on the technical where we're going to highlight um, uh, what we would consider sort of foundational platforms, obviously Hyperledger, um, Fabric and Sawtooth would be um, one of the units, we'll talk about Ethereum and the enterprise side of that as well, and, and, and some other platforms. Um, the third course is uh, a, a little bit on legal, a little bit on policy, um, standards organizations, and um, uh, and consortia. Um, basically, looking at some of the some of the opportunities and the challenges in uh, implementing blockchain and healthcare. And then the last course is going to be a deep dive, looking at specific projects. Um, uh, that are sort of hitting the main areas, drug supply chain, track and trace, information exchange, credentialing, and some others. Um, so we're really looking for, uh, to make this really engaging for the students, um, we really want to get some content, um, some speakers from the community uh, to either talk about um, how they may be using uh, Hyperledger or to talk about a specific project in a use case. Um, it could be either you know a presentation um, with existing materials, or we can do it an interview. All this can be done online, but we're really looking to engage with the community um, to contribute some content for for the course because we think that that's the best way for these students um, to get out. Their graduate level students, when they get out, that they have um, an understanding when they get into the healthcare world as to uh, how blockchain might be able to solve some of the problems that uh, we're facing in healthcare. Yeah, and, and uh, it really, I think uh, to Joe's point, it, it's really what we're looking for is, is sort of, you know, a, a very tangible, uh, a, a sort of vetted uh, experience that, that many of us have already gone through. Uh, we don't want to necessarily see this as just pure, purely academic. It really needs to be wedded very, very closely with sort of, you know, our day-to-day -day realities. Uh, and, and it really is going to be to the benefit of the students coming out of this that they'll have very uh, apropos understanding of you know, what's really out there uh, and, and they can get started very, very quickly with that, uh, with that knowledge in hand. So, so, Joe, I think going forward, the plan will be we're going to develop uh, sort of an a, a, a email. It'll go out to the full membership uh, to try to engage resources to help, help you develop this, these, these courses, correct? Yep. Yeah, that would be absolutely. And, and like I said, you know, we're, we're designing the course and we will be, we're creating our own, you know, materials to outline the course, but um, a, a, each course will have seven units, basically seven weeks. And within each of those weeks, we would like to have at least an hour uh, or whatever is the appropriate amount of sort of um, uh, content and, and, and sort of discussion from uh, people on the ground is, is, is essentially what we're, we're, we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's excellent. And uh, as uh, w sort of looping back to the very beginning of, of today's meeting, uh, uh, I think we were talking with Jeff, the, the idea is we have over a 1000 members within, uh, within the SIG membership. And so uh, certainly we have the resources available. It's just really reaching out to those resources. Uh, and people in, in this particular case, uh, that Joe's offering, uh, having people sort of help develop the, these courses and, uh, and ideally even uh, in some cases being able to come and speak uh, to talk a little bit about these, uh, the, this, the, the issues that they're, that they're driving forward with. Yeah, exactly. And just one last point, Rich. So this is a, it, the, each of the courses is an online course. Um, and um, we, are, we are expecting that this will have international reach. So we, we certainly would love to have input from people outside of the U.S., and perspectives on you know blockchain and healthcare uh, in, in in or throughout the world. 
Yeah, uh, f f fantastic. Yeah, I think you guys are r really tracking on something great. And so, uh, you know, I think we'd, we'd be very happy to help out to the extent that we can. Great. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, everyone. Well, thank you, Joe. Okay. Uh, and so, again, um, if you're interested, please reach out to myself or contact Joe. Uh, and again, uh, the, the way to do it is either uh, you, can get, you can always reach me through email um, uh, directly. Uh, or, of course, uh, the, the Rocket uh, Chat channel uh, for our healthcare SIG as well. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, I think that's that's pretty much brings us up to the top of the hour. Uh, thanks for everyone uh, for making this uh, another great hour. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, and uh, I think uh, unless anyone else uh, has a, any closing comments or thoughts, So yes, I just had a question, maybe for you or Wendy. So how do we, uh, are these use cases kind of, uh, you can just kind of go in and, and kind of, you know, put your use cases out there or do we have to work with Wendy to, to, to kind of filter them out? Just want to understand that. I'll, I'll let Wendy talk to that. Oh, sure. Well, there are two ways that we could, that, that people are pursuing use cases within this group. Some are targeted, some people just do their, benefit from group participation to create their own use cases and they use them as they like. But um, Rich and I had envisioned um, that any use cases that are originating from this special interest group would follow a consistent format and then we can also determine what dissemination strategies we, we, we would use um, that would best represent this hyperledger group. Yeah. I, I would agree, and I think that's that's probably the the, the right way to approach it. And um, so, so to your point, Nasar, uh, the the easiest way to get involved would be to just simply contact uh, either Wendy or myself. And uh, as I said, Wendy and I are going to uh, put together sort of a schedule to see uh, when we can get a meeting spun up. Uh, my guess would be we this will fir first go out to full membership because there are always people that can't make these particular calls in the morning. Uh, but always express an interest in engagement. Uh, and so uh, when we sort of get that feedback, uh, you know, back, uh, that'll sort of direct us on uh, how, to, how to move forward with a, with a sort of a kickoff meeting. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, well that said, uh, thanks everyone uh, for your particip participation this week. Uh, in two weeks, uh, we'll be hearing from uh, Fernando and, uh, and that is on June 14th, uh, again, Friday, seven o'clock in the morning Pacific time. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, Rich. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thanks. Thank you, Dennis.